Blakemore and Cooper, 1970, Impact of Early Visual Experience Background From the moment we're born, our early experiences in our environment shape us to become who we are. We quickly learn to associate the sound of our parents' voices with feeling safe, and after three months, babies begin to recognise faces. As humans, our brains are the most complex of any animal on Earth. However, according to previous research, the brain structure of some animals is very similar, including cats. Previous studies have found that cats possess visual recognition memory and neuroplasticity, and that the development of spatial perception in their early years, when they were kittens, depends on the visual environment that they experienced. In normal cats, neurons of the visual cortex are selective of the orientation of lines and edges in the visual field, which simply means that they are able to recognise which direction lines and outlines of objects are facing when they look at them. However, a study found that this can be changed based on the cat's early visual experience. The study by Hirsch and Spinelli in 1970 investigated a group of newborn kittens with one eye viewing vertical stripes and the other eye viewing horizontal stripes, and found that out of 21 neurons with elongated receptive fields, all were monocularly driven, and in all but one case, the orientation of the receptive field closely matched the pattern experienced by the eye. The study by Blakemore and Cooper investigated this further, with a slightly different approach, to find out more about how cats' visual environment can affect the development of their visual cortex. AIM The researchers aimed to investigate the effects of limited early visual experience on the development of primary visual cortex in cats, and whether brain plasticity occurs innately or is learned. Sample the participants in the study were two newborn kittens that were immediately placed into dark rooms from birth onwards. After two weeks, the kittens were then randomly allocated to one of two conditions and placed into a new environment for five hours a day. Methodology The study was a laboratory experiment which used an independent measures design. There were two independent variables, which were whether the kittens were reared in a horizontal or vertical environment. The dependent variable was the kittens' behaviour once they were placed into a normal, illuminated environment and whether their visual motor behaviour included the ability to detect objects that were aligned perpendicular to the lines that they had experienced in the experimental condition. Procedure From the moment they were born, all of the kittens that were used in the experiment were taken from their mother and placed into a dark room with no light. After two weeks, the kittens were placed into a tall cylinder that had either vertical or horizontal black and white stripes covering the interior walls, depending on the condition the kittens were allocated to. The cylinder was 46 centimetres in diameter and 2 metres high, and illuminated with light, so that the kittens could clearly see the stripes. The floor of the cylinder was made of glass, and there were no corners or edges within the environment, which meant that the only lines the kittens could see were vertical or horizontal black stripes. The kittens were also made to wear a wide black collar, which restricted their vision to about 130 degrees, so that they couldn't see their own body. They were placed in the cylinders for around five hours per day during this second phase of the experiment, which lasted five months, far beyond the critical period during which total visual deprivation causes significant and permanent psychological impairment, according to a study by Hubel and Weasel in 1970. The kittens were then placed into a well-lit room for several hours per week, which was furnished with tables, chairs and other common household objects. Their reactions were measured in relation to this new environment, namely, whether the kittens had experienced the vertical condition in the previous phase of the experiment, were able to detect horizontally aligned objects, and vice versa. After seven and a half months, two of the kittens, one from the vertical condition and one from the horizontal condition, were taken to have their neurophysiology examined under anesthesia. Results Initially, after being moved to the room furnished with tables and chairs, all kittens were extremely visually impaired. They could not detect objects or edges that were aligned oppositely to the cylindrical environment that they had previously experienced. The kittens also had no startle response if an object was thrust towards their face, and they seemed to possess no visual placing, which is a reflex action where animals are able to position their legs on the ground automatically. Moreover, the kittens mostly guided their movements by touch, and became frightened when they reached the edge of a surface they were standing on. However, their pupillary reflexes were measured as normal which is where the diameter of their pupils in the eye adjusts automatically in reaction to light. After around 10 hours in their new environment, the kittens showed recovery in their visual placing abilities and startle responses, and some could easily jump from a chair to the floor. Despite this recovery, some of the deficits were permanent. Their depth perception remained distorted, 
often leading to them trying to touch things that were moving on the other side of the room, far beyond their reach. They would also frequently bump into things, such as table legs, as they moved around, and they would follow moving objects with clumsy, jerky head movements. When presenting a sheet of perspex with black and white lines to a kitten, they would show no reaction if it was oriented perpendicular to the orientation they had experienced previously, but would give a startle response if shown the orientation matching their previous cylindrical environment. The same reaction would happen if a rod was shaken in front of the kitten. If it was shaken in the matching orientation to the kitten's prior environment, they would react to it, but not if the rod was shaken in the perpendicular direction. The results from the neurophysiology exam showed that some of the kitten's neurons in their brains that were responsible for recognising vertical and horizontal planes did not fire off, depending on which condition the kittens belonged to. Those which were raised in a vertical environment had no neurons firing in the horizontal orientation and vice versa. Around 75% of neurons in the kittens of both conditions were binocular, and their responses were almost identical to those of a normal kitten. Furthermore, there were no signs of astigmatism, a condition where the shape of the eyes becomes slightly elongated, which leads to distorted or blurry vision. This meant that the visual impairments displayed by the kittens could not be explained by this condition. In addition, none of the large regions of the brain, the cortexes, seemed to be silent in relation to the missing cortical columns that were found during the neurophysiology exam. In other words, no parts of the kittens' brains seemed to be missing. Conclusions the researchers concluded that the kitten's perceptual brain development is significantly affected by early experiences and environmental factors, rather than simply genetics. They also noted that there was clear evidence of brain plasticity among the kittens, with their visual cortexes adapting to their new environmental experience in the room with tables and chairs, although this seemed to be limited, with many spatial deficits remaining. The results support the nurture side of the nature versus nurture debate. Since the kitten's early visual experience modified their brains, which had serious consequences for their perceptual abilities. Evaluations. The study was a laboratory experiment with highly controlled conditions, including the kitten's environment and the amount of time they spent in each condition, which meant that the study was high in reliability, and the researchers could infer cause and effect due to high levels of internal validity. However, this also meant that the study lacked ecological validity since the high controlled laboratory conditions are not reflective of real life situations. Therefore, it may be hard to generalise the results to all situations involving the spatial development for cats. For example, they don't often have large black collars during their early life. The entire study took place over a period of many months, which means that the researchers could monitor the changes in the kitten's perceptual abilities over time. However, the scope of the study's findings are limited to just those first few months of the kitten's lives and don't reveal any of the long-term and permanent effects of visual deprivation as the kittens mature. A longitudinal study to investigate the effects of long-term might generate more useful data. The experiment had a number of ethical considerations, including the long-term neurological harm to the kittens through visual deprivation, particularly during the critical early stage, which according to Hubel and Weasel's study in 1970, can cause more permanent psychological impairment. However, the researchers in Blakemore and Cooper's study reported no distress among the kittens, and the study complied with the ethical guidelines for animal research at the time, although the guidelines have since changed a lot. The study arguably has a high level of usefulness in analysing the effects of visual deprivation on perception and spatial awareness, at least in cats. It is questionable whether the results could be generalised to humans, however, many areas of the cat's brains are similar to humans, including the neurons responsible for recognising horizontal and vertical planes. Moreover, the sample used in the experiment consisted of only two kittens, which was relatively small and may mean that it's difficult to generalise the results to other cats.